Welcome again. This time we're going to learn <coughs> hash tables in OCaml or OCaml hash tables. Uh, I'm going to assume that you are familiar with hash tables, but uh, I'll give you a quick overview of what hash tables are and then show you how to create and manipulate them in OCaml. So hash tables are used for quick data storage and retrieval. So we use them to store data and retrieve data quickly. Notice the word quick and the way they look like is a sort of key value pair so we have a long list of key value pairs where using a key we want to store a value somewhere you can think of it as, as for example as an array although the, uh, adva the disadvantage of arrays is that their size is usually fixed whereas in hash tables we can grow the size just like we do in uh, linked lists but anyway, you can think of it as an array where we have an index and then element. The hash tables have some have sort of like a, a similar idea where we have a key and a value, i.e. an index and a value or element values. For example, our key can be sort of like a name and the value can be an address. So the data or the records are stored in buckets. So the places in that array or the, <coughs> the entries in the hash table are called buckets using hash keys see the, so these hash keys uh, the way this works is as follows uh, for a hash table for a key value pair to be stored in this data structure we usually have a function that's called a hash function and that hash function um, given the key it looks at the key it does some sort of uh, uh, calculations it applies a hashing algorithm um, and as you can see it applies a hashing algorithm and sort of spits out or outputs in an index value a value to tell us where to store that value this value here in our uh, hash table or in our data structure so I'll say that again we have a hashing function or a hashing algorithm that uses the key that we provide to generate a certain number or an index and we use that index to store our value that we want to store in the data structure or in our hash table of course that hashing function is so special that given the same key it should always generate the same index the same value that we use to store our value here I keep saying value value we have two values now notice this value that we want to store and the value or the index value that is generated by our hashing function and we use it to store that value and then to look it up again if we want to retrieve the value that is there yes so it tells us the hashing function uh, is applied to the key and it pr produces a new index value that tells us where to store this value or the data or the record that the record that we have in our structure or in you can think of it as we said as an array and again given uh, the same key value they always return the same index also if just in case if we have a collision a collision here is that is the case where sometimes the hashing function produces the same key or the, the yeah, produces the same index for two slightly different um, key values well what we can do then is and this this case is called collision what we can do is instead of saving one value at that particular place at that particular location we can save multiple values by chaining them so the technique is called chaining so we can use a sort of a linked list there and whenever we have a new value if that place of that bucket has one or more values uh, already then we can chain it link it to them using a linked list and then we can retrieve that value by using the key to get the index and then to look up that linked list enough talking let's have a look how it works when it comes to OCaml OCaml we can go to the OCaml system and go to the index of modules and find the module hash table and in there we can find a lot of information um, this tells us that hash tables are polymorphic this function create we use it to create a hash table and then we can clear it we can reset we can copy values from there we can add a value or find 
one or more values so these two finds one of them gives us the last fun the last one that's that was inserted in a certain location and find all gives us all the values if we had a collision and we had to store them in a linked list as I explained a few moments ago and then mem remove to remove something replace replace a value mem checks whether uh, a value is in the table or not iterate remember these uh, functions from uh, the list module I explained in the last few videos uh, iterate fold I hope you understand how these work so you can use them even on <coughs> with you can use them with hash tables then we can we have length and a lot of other functions as you can see let's have a look at how we can create a uh, um, um, a hash table in OCaml let's go to our beautiful top loop and remember hash table by the way in OCaml uh, the way it's pronounced is hash tbl always remember that going back to our um, um, uh, top level we can say for example let my hash or something let's for example hash table equals and I use hash table dot create and then uh, I give it a, I give it an initial size let's say for example 100 initial size now this size if I exceed the value of 100 entries then it will be ex expanded automatically so don't worry about the size but always try to have a good guess of how many elements you need but as I said it will expand automatically if you notice here we said this uh, single quote it means it's polymorphic so the key value is polymorphic the key is polymorphic and the value is polymorphic however that underscore means as soon as we create a table we add something to it we if we add for example int and string then we won't be able to change the the types of int and string to float and uh, boolean for example that underscore means we cannot change them as soon as we start using them so it's still polymorphic until now but the first element we have uh, I'm sorry the f if we add the f as soon as we add the first element OCaml will automatically infer the type of the hash table and won't accept anything different than that so let me just for example add an entry and this is how we add an entry we say hash table dot add and then uh, 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 I call this actually hash table we add for example um, L so that's the key value and then London that's the value so we have a key I have a pair now L and L and London that's where I live at the moment and then we can add for example another L just to have some sort of collision and then leads so we have two values now and this is where chaining happens so these two guys will be, will be still at the same bucket as we explained before but they will be chained together um, uh, let's add another one maybe for example L and maybe Liverpool and maybe add another one for example um, T Tripoli that's where I'm from Tripoli Libya and then maybe add another one um, C for example and then Cairo yes so we've added a few values to the, to the table now let's check the size of our hash table and we, there's a function called um, length we give it the hash table and returns the length so hash table dot length copy that paste it here remember anything I can do here you can do it and you can do it in your source code or down the top level and it has five values now if I want to retrieve a value then I give it the um, I give it the key value so hash table dot find that's how I look up a value and I say L for example notice that for L now we have several values this chaining concept the com conflict resolution but it will um, <coughs> Oh yeah, I need, I need to provide the hash table name. So ha hash table dot find, and then hash table, and then L. So what happens now is it returns the last value added to that list to that position. But if I want to have all the values, I can use hash table dot find, find all, rather than find, and then give it the hash table name and give it the key, and it returns a list of all the values. 
uh, stored at that key as I mentioned before this is called conflict and the way th there's several ways around it one way is to use a linked list there and link all the values that they look them up and then try to find uh, the one that we are interested in so I hope this makes sense I hope I hope you get the idea of using hash tables in OCaml it's very very easy um, and we just use we need to have a look at the hash table module by the way we can open it if we want so we can use things without having uh, the um, um, pr and of course hit enter now without having to have this uh, concept of using the um, fully qualified name with a dot notation what else do we have here so length uh, randomize you read about that fold and iterate we cover that in uh, lists so the same concept uh, concept applies here if we want to remove something removes the current binding of X in table current binding means the last one that we entered so for example if we use remove and L it will remove the Liverpool entry so for example here the last one we when we retrieved it when we used find it gave us back Liverpool but if I use uh, if I use remove because I'm I can use it I can use remove uh, 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 without hash table dot now because I open hash table I can say remove and then from hash table I provide the hash table name and then L then it remove the last one now if I do find L again it should bring back Leeds rather than Liverpool yes as you can see now uh, of course obviously the linked list here which is used to resolve the, the, the conflict uh, works as last in first out as a LIFO so it looks like a stack actually rather than a list but anyway I'm sure you get the idea that's how you can use it please read through the documentation there's a lot of things that you can do find find all we've seen those to check whether uh, an element e exists or a binding exists a binding means when we say binding means that a key value pair exists so a value is bind to a key or a key is bound is bound to a value yes hope you get that thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time